And guess what? Today is a day the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Oh, I'm going to cry already. <laughs> Alan phoned me up a couple of weeks ago and said, Rod, do you think you have a word for the church? I said, I might have a few. But he caught me on a very bad day. I'd just been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, right? Now, when you go to the doctor and he says um, chronic and disease, you think, oh, wow. Anyway, so I was there and the phone rang and he said, blah, blah, blah. I said, Alan, I don't think I can. I'm not in a good place at the moment. And um, I said, no, I, I can't do it. And I've got to go here. What else did I say? Yeah. After a few days, I thought it over, this diagnosis. It's not going to define who I am, okay? And um, I'm a son of God. And I remember the time that Jesus said, I'm your saviour. And I thought, no. So I rang, when I saw Alan on the Sunday, I said, look, Al, um, I think I can bring a word to the church. And I know he teed up Daniel. And Daniel was very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, when I was in the doctor's, he said, um, I said, look, what is this thing? What, can I control? He said, look, Rod, you're not going to get, it. I've got 50% kidney failure, or whatever they call it. And I said, can I get it back? He said, no, you can stop it getting worse. I said, how? He said, um, well, give up smoking, give up drinking, exercise, diet. I said, I do all those things. And he said, well, there's no hope. Right? Anyway, have we got that there? It's all right, it's all right. And um, when he said there's no hope, now there's two ways of saying no hope, isn't there? N-O or K-N-O-W. I believe in the bottom one. I have hope, yeah. okay? And I thought, yeah, that's, where, that's going to define me. Yeah. And... Can you remember in Corinthians 12, you probably don't, in Corinthians 12, 79, Paul was speaking about this thorn that he had in his side. And we don't know what it was. It never mentions what it was. It might have been some historical thing. It might have been an injury. It might have been a disease. We don't know. But it was bugging him badly. And it says three times he asked God to remove it. What happened? It didn't. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And as Paul went on in his life, that thorn didn't define him. God's grace defined him. And we all know what, what he went on from there, how great Paul was spreading the word. Okay, that's, where, that's my start. Before I start... I want to say this to you. I'm not a pastor, I'm not a preacher, and certainly not a theologian. So what you're going to hear today is who I am, where I've come from, and how Jesus stepped into my life, okay? Most of you don't know I was born in England. But looking at me, I don't look like I'm English, do I? My mother was born in South Africa of... Portuguese parents. She was totally Portuguese. Her name was Carmelita de Coito. How beautiful is that? And she matched her name. She was so beautiful. Anyway, she was born in 1900. She came to England after the First World War as a nanny. And she went to this big manor sort of house as a nanny. And my father was the chauffeur there. It's a bit like Downton Abbey or upstairs, downstairs. And they met, got married, had six children. Okay, five boys and one girl. I was the last. Perfection. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there I was, little Rodney. And I'll tell you this. When I was born in 1941, Europe was raging, okay, and the Bismarck was getting ready to wreak havoc on the Allies. And there's one ship called the HMS Rodney. And... What a great name. It was moored, ready to go out, okay, and chase the Bismarck with some other ships. 
And my mum and dad named me after HMS Rodney. This is, I'm going to be very quick. Okay, after the war, when the rationing came off and there were things available or whatever, my mum gave me a birthday party. I might have been six or seven. And I was so proud of my name. And I said, Mum, tell my friends how I got my name. And um, she said, oh, yes, Rodney. What a beautiful name. We named him after that famous battleship. Really, yeah, because he always had a wet bottom. <laughs> eh? And that ruined my life forever. <laughs> oh, so now you can call me Rod, all right? <laughs> okay, anyway, things happen. I went to school. Um, I always felt the love in my home. You know, but we did it tough. We lived in council houses. My dad never owned a car. He used to go to work on a bike. He was a mechanic. My mum with all the kids, okay, at home, looking at family, look after family. And when I was 11, I passed a thing called the 11 plus. That sort of seeds you into what sort of school you're going to end up in. And I ended up in a grammar school, would you believe? Okay. Every day going to school, I had to wear a blazer with a motive on it. Okay. And here it is. I made that up. That's, not, that's exactly what it looked like on here. And you see a windmill. Outside the school was a windmill. Okay. And that's where we get the windmill. Now, the words are Latin. Nice spiritual day in the hill. And I used to wear this to school every day. I wasn't a Christian, but I always think I was an, an agnostic. I knew something was there. Okay. And that means without the breath of God, nothing. Okay. Isn't that fantastic? That was a score. Now, in that interpretation, the breath of God could be the wind. We know it's a spirit here, but we used to, my Latin master would say, oh, that's the wind, and it turns the wheels, the, 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 the um, what do they call them? The things of the windmill. Okay, come on, Paul, tell me what this is. Yeah, anyway. And it makes the bread, and bread is food. It's right, it's a, fantastic, isn't it? And that was on my, every time I went to school, it's on my blazer. And, you know, somehow the spirit was working through me. Anyway, I came to Australia in 1966 on another boat. Met Laney. Okay, I met Laney. And we got married in a registry office. Okay, we didn't believe any. I wasn't even baptised or christened as a young boy. Laney was the same. Okay, we had none of this sort of Christian religious thing in our lives. And it always sort of... But I knew in the background there was something there. Okay. I couldn't believe that all this was happenstance. Okay, we got married. We had a child called Jeremy, the most beautiful boy you ever saw. Okay, he had problems. And Lainey was a fantastic mother, used to look after him. She gave up work, I used to be work or whatever. And we had, he was the most beautiful boy. Going to move on here quick now. We come to, oh, we were still living in Sydney, and Lainey came to know Jesus. A beautiful lady brought her to know Jesus. And she came home, and you could see something had changed in her life. It was beautiful. And she used to talk to me about it. I said, I don't need that. It's good for you. I don't need all that in my life. I've got other things going on. Does it mean going to church and putting money in the thing? Oh, you know, all those things that come up. Perhaps I was thinking like that. Anyway, we came to the North Coast. And Lainey found a lovely church, and she used to go there, she used to come home, and she made some lovely friends. And I became part of that church family, without being a Christian. I think it might happen here sometime as well. And they were praying for me. One time, they had a visit from some um, Texans, came over from Texas, on a mission. And they were preaching, a bit like YWAM, I think. They used to go out and do a bit of evangelising and stuff, and speaking in churches. And one night, they had a men's group at the church. And Lainey said... So-and-so's going, you, you know, I said, oh, all right, I'll go along. Had a good time. There's this big, tall man, he's a Texan. His name was Tommy Weathersby. And he got talking to me, blah, 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 talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, on the following Sunday, he pulls up at church and someone, he's looking for me, right? And someone said, oh, there's his wife over there. And he goes up to Laney and he said, where's Rod? She said, oh, Rod doesn't come to church. Why? Why? He's not a Christian. What? Anyway, following Friday, I was, used to work, um, have an early t time on Friday. Unbeknownst to me, about two o'clock, half past two, there's a knock at the door. And there's Tommy Weathersby. Came in. 
the first thing he said to me, right, I understand you're not a Christian. I said, oh, tell me. I said, you know, and I went through all that thing again, blah, blah. And Laney was praying. Up, and I said, we lived on an acre then. So I said, oh, let's just go out and walk around the garden. Walk around. Ba, 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 ba. And finally, we came inside, right? And he said, right, if what you believe is true, and what I believe is true, right, that there's no eternity, there's none of that, but if there is, what have you got to lose, really? He said, would you get on your knees and invite Jesus into your life? I said, all right. So I got on my knees. I invited Jesus into my life. I stood up and I was crying. I do it quite regularly when I talk about this. I was crying and smiling at the same time. And again, it's like Paul on the road to Damascus. It's like Alan, okay, and John Newton. I'll talk about that in a minute. They had this realisation where the spirit burst out of their chest somehow and joined with God's spirit. You hear what I'm saying? It's that spirit that lies dormant in each one of us, waiting to be birthed into a new life. And that takes me back again. I'm going, to, I'm going all over the place here. Now, we can probably forget about the overheads because I'm mucking them up. In Genesis 1, it talks about creation. And the first thing, it talks about chaos, the dark, but God's spirit was hovering over the whole thing. Okay, until the voice, let there be light, okay, and the spirit again bursts forth into a new birth. And that's similar to what we experience when we accept Jesus Christ as our saviour. Wow, isn't that great? I think it's absolutely amazing. Anyway, where am I? I'm I'm, I'm getting carried away here. (laughs) And, um, And anyway, when I became a Christian, blah, 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 we got married in the sight of God. Okay? Jim um, Gallagher came and we, we, on our acre under a big beautiful tree there. He, um, we went through our wedding vows again in the sight of God. It was most beautiful. Getting back to that dormant spirit, okay? It's amazing, that spirit of God. Okay, nicely spiritual day in the hill. Without the spirit of God or the breath of God, we're nothing. Really, we're doomed, aren't we? Because it's another thing. In Genesis, is that the one we're going to read now? Can we just go along to the other Genesis one I've got there? Stay with me. This is all new to me, honestly. Um, one fourteen, is it? It talks about. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times, days, years, and seasons. That's when time began, okay? Because time makes order. Who wears a watch? It's on your phone. It's, time is a burden sometimes, but it gives us form and and thing, just like when the earth was created. And um, this is another thing. Okay, God made time. He put the, 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 the lights in the sky. The three what I'm going to talk about is the sun, the moon, and earth. And they're intrinsically moulded together. We've got the earth, the moon goes round in a day. We've got the earth that goes round the sun in a year. And that going around the sun is not circular. It's in an orbit like an ellipse or like an egg shape. So the further out you go, you get the seasons because it gets colder the further away from the sun. It's a bit closer. We had. It's mind-boggling. And I've got these facts for you. These are facts, not science. It's facts. It says here, the earth is spinning at 1,600 kilometres an hour. We're here now, and the earth is spinning at 1,600 kilometres an hour. Can you believe that? Please do, because it's a fact. Okay. Also, to get around the sun, we've got to move again. Now, do you know what speed that is? Anybody have a guess? It's 100,000 kilometres an hour. Can you grasp that? 
I find it very hard. And, because the sun, and, oh, in that journey of a year, it travels, Earth, 950 million kilometres in a year. Now, can you tell me that happened by happenstance, by an accident, by whatever? Who could create such a thing like that? Only, only God. That's right. If that's the only thing I've got to say today, I think that's okay. You believe that? Stay with me. I've got a bit more here. These are musings of an old man, all right? So we've got the seasons and whatever. I'm, I'm getting to the end nearly, actually. Well, that's good, is it? <laughs> now, we talk about time and age. Look at me. My eyes are going, my hair's falling out. Look at the skin here, right? I'm doomed. I'm doomed. But God made us like that, okay? All things are going to pass away one time. And even the dragonfly, which lives for about a day, and the mountains that live for thousands of years are going to disappear one day. God ordained that as well. He has given us free will and free choice. <laughs> What's the choice that we're going to make? Life or death? When you give your life to Jesus, you're still a sinner, okay? You repent, that means changing the thing, whatever. But we're still sinners. I sin every day. But through Jesus, I'm saved. Through the blood of Jesus, we talk about the communion. We are saved. We, you know, and that time when we were in new creation, I'm only 34, really, you know. It was 1988 that time I became... Oh, can I just read this? When I came to know the Lord, Tommy Weathersby, the American, gave me this little thing. It's called One Called Out. It's a New Testament. And I'm not going to boast here, but this is what he wrote. To Rod, my brother in Christ, may God richly bless you with his love, peace and joy. I trust you to his care. Growing grace and in service for him, I believe God has great things in store for you. Tommy Weathersby. Five o'clock, 29th of July, 1988. If that's all I've got to say to you, I'm pleased. And um, so where... What's your choice today? Do you know Jesus? Please don't hesitate. To, in your quiet time, I was going to talk about John Newton. Okay. John Newton, he was a slave trader. He was sailing down the coast of Africa on the Atlantic Ocean, picking up slaves to sell. One day, or whatever, he was on the ocean and a huge storm brewed up and he lost men and other things overboard. And he cried out, Lord, if you're there, save us. The sea calmed. The sea calmed. When he got to shore, he repented. He turned his life around. He became a preacher. And that song that he wrote, you know the song he wrote? Amazing Grace. Save the wretch. And I, when I hear that, save the wretch like me. And that was John Newton. We all know Alan's conversion. We know Paul's conversion. You know my conversion. Have anybody heard of Arthur Stace, the Eternity Man? In Sydney in the 30s and 40s, oh no, sorry, 30s and 40s and 60s. For 35 years, he wrote the word Eternity on the pavements. Ah, do you see that? Do you see that sign above Alan and Jackie's head? It's eternity. That's on our front door. We've got that there. And anybody comes, they can sit on that seat and book their seat to eternity. Okay? Now, that's how he wrote it in copper plate. For 35 years, he wrote that on the pavement with the yellow crayon. And he was a disheveled, drunk, criminal man. And he was walking down George Street in Sydney one night. And he heard John Ridley, I think it was, this fire and brimstone preacher. And he... He got on his knees and accepted Jesus. Jesus knows where you are, 
who you are. It's all different. Our conversions are all different. You could be right here now just asking God to come into my life. If that's so, please do it. When you get home, ask somebody else. It's later than you think. And Ecclesiastes, I'm closing up on this, Ecclesiastes tells us that eternity is written in our heart. Do you believe me? Thank you. Okay, would you close your eyes? I'd just like to close in one of my favourite doxologies. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen.